Welcome to A7FL opening day. Wait, that's not right. But it is. After two months of battling for their chance at an A7FL playoff spot, the path has become set for a new chance. A chance at doing something only eight other teams have been able to do. Become A7FL champion. While some teams will benefit from their hard work and open the door for a less treacherous road on the proud highway into the desert this July, others take it back to the start. Whether you're a cornerstone of the league, brash upstarts rising out of the desert, or teams demanding respect after barely hanging on to the ride, everyone starts zero and zero. When the sun rises in the east, 18 teams will be alive, but when it sets on the shores of the Golden State, only 12 will be left standing. Welcome to opening day two, and the wildest tournament in football. It's the A7FL playoffs, and it starts now. Yeah. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. And the ball is thrown off. And here we go. The A7FL wild card round is underway. Welcome to the tournament. Babo now will cut to the 20, get around to the 25, try to get through the defenders, and then brought down at the 23-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Quattrell Huffin. That's Malik. Um, that, that's Leak, excuse me, with the tackle on the three-on-one. Pretty good return by Bebo, and we'll see. And it will be first and 10. You see the Honey Badger set up. And let me take a look inside the huddle. And, Corey, when we take a look at Quattrell Huff, and you see Kenneth Stewart there, the young bull, you see a mix of young guys, you see a mix of veterans, you see the San Sebastian brothers on that roster who are the founders of this team. Do you trust that offensive line for 60 minutes? It's first and 10. Two wide receivers set. Stewart in motion. He'll set up opposite side in the slot. Wide receiver, that's number eight. Jubril Beeman. Huff will snap. Huff will run with the ball. He'll cut down the sideline. He'll get to the 40. He will plow through a defender and get knocked out of play at the 46. And that's a great play from Huff. And, and you asked about the offensive line. And, and to me, the Animals don't have one of the top-tier offensive lines. You don't see Shaquem McCutcheon out there just as of yet. But what, what they do is they move around, and you see all of the motion, all of the changes in formation, and they get a seal on Trey Baskerville. They cause enough hesitation with the play action, and Huff's just being a magician. He does the pump fake, everybody goes for it, and he gets the first down easy, and the animals are moving early, even though that, that pre-play <laughs> took forever. First and 10, and there you see Trey Baskerville looking to come off the edge. The man with the cheetah print Lambo looking to light up the board, and here comes Baskerville. Huff will run to the sideline. He will get to the first down. He'll cross the 50 and get run out of bounds at the 41. It'll be first and 10 it's for a, the Animals. It's a mirror concept to play one. They go play action to the other side. It just makes Trey hesitate enough. But you see Quattro Huff, and he has the acceleration to get away from the chasing defensive end, and it looks like they're going to go hurry up. It'll be first and 10, Quattro Huff, and with three wide receivers, one of them being a very large T TBS tight end. And that's Lou Shiesty in motion. Shiesty at the bottom of your screen. Stewart at the top. Ron Clark watching. The snap, the throw to the sideline. Caught. And that one will gain maybe a yard, if not get back to the line of scrimmage. Now, I'm not sure what the Renegades think is the best way to deal with this motion. But you can see here, Huff is sending receivers from one side of the field to the other. And the corners are actually going all the way across the field. That is a tell of, and here's the, the hurry up. On second and nine, Huff in trouble. Haynes and Baskerville chase. They will bring him down, and it will be incomplete. And you see they used, they tried to use the hurry up to their advantage, but the one thing about the hurry up that can come to bite you is if you can't get the play and you can't get everybody on the same page, you're just as off balance as the defense. And now it's third down, and they're still hurrying up to the line. 
Third and nine. Three wide receivers set. Three on the line. Here comes the pressure to throw. That's to John Kessler. Kessler will get to the 31. He will not get the first down, and it'll be fourth in a mere matter of inches. Well, and, and for fans new to the A7, you picked a good time to start watching in the playoffs, but there is no field goal kicking. There is no kicking at all unless you're, you know, throwing a temper tantrum on the sideline and kicking some kind of, you know, piece of equipment. So we have to go for a football play. So fourth and one, here's the handoff. And he gets the first down, and there's the conversion. Ron Clerk on the tackle. Good to see Ron Clerk out there. And that's, uh, but they'll go hurry up again, Matt. Carry. It'll be first and 10. 11.30 left to go. Matt Ryan joined by Corey Hammond. Number double zero. You'll get the... Fake it on the snap, handoff to 20, and brought down after a moderate gain of about one. They go jet action, counter. That's Oye Marrero on the carry, and see here on the replay. They're sticking with the hurry up, and they I guess Huff sees something that he likes, but definitely on fourth down, they weren't in position. And it. Slip slide, little shicey into the end zone. Touchdown, Silk City. And it, that has that has to be a record because the animals have scored on those non-scene touchdowns so common in this early A7 NFL season. And that is why you can't put a replay up when Quatrell Huffin is on the field. We got got by the fastest offense in the A7. That quick screen. And it's the Baltimore special. You got to count to seven, guys. It's A7 for a reason. We give you the he cheat sheet, but that is a, a, a quick touchdown, and, and there's Huff you, again. You know why they did the Baltimore special? Because they plan on being special in Baltimore next week in the divisional round of the A7FL playoffs. Action starts at the same time, 1 p.m., right here on A7FL.tv. And the point after touchdown, again, no kicking, so they're going to go for one point from the five. These are going to be huge. Throws Tosses back, it back to, to Stewart. Stewart will cut, throw, and caught! Picked up, and that's Oye Marrero making it 7 nothing here in the early going. And shout-outs to Las Vegas. The Animals just pulled out a kryptonite RTC statue formation for the extra point conversion. A7FL is international, baby. And Quatrell Huffin. Not looking to go gently into that good night. He might be the fourth seed, but he's playing like he's at the top. He's trying to make his way to the A7FL championship. We see it here, that play again on the replay. That extra point, beautiful throw, beautiful play. Will it be Oye Marrero and company making their way to the A7FL championship? Celebrate the A7FL's ninth championship in style with championship weekend presented by A7FL Nevada. Join us starting July 21st at Anderson Automotive Arena for three days of events, including a flag tournament, pro combine, and esports tournaments. Head on over to A7FL.com slash championship. That's A7FL.com slash championship. And if you want tickets with 25% off until midnight, use the code A7FL Insider. That three-on-one throw-off will be picked up by Khalil Green inside the the end zone. And he decides to take it back. Cuts in, gets it, oh, and he gets eaten up by the turf monster, and it will be first down. And the tackle made there, the game-saving tackle potentially by Sierra Hancock, the rookie. And we all know Khalil Green for how dangerous he is on the three-on-one. It almost looks like a mistake when he took it back. They, they took off the last two weeks, really, to prepare for this game. They've been talking about a rematch with this team all year since week two. But and you see there on the Mason cam, wide receiver in motion. Starting a game off with two false starts isn't a great way to start it. First and 20. Ball spotted, pardon me, at the 12-yard line. The handoff to Liberty. Liberty will get past the U-line of scrimmage and get to the 15. Yep. And and short hair Burt on the toss. You know, for, for a guy who's coming back off an of injury to see CP3 first play, toss, and then lead block, you got to love the heart that this quarterback brings to the position and as a leader of this offense. Three-yard gain will bring up second and 17, but, you know, for the Renegades to be successful in this game, I think they do need to rely on a pretty strong running game, pretty good running options, and take advantage of that running game when the animals give them a chance to. Big angry number 87, Gabe Garcia, set up in the slot. Two wide receivers set. Liberty set up top right. That's Breezy, number 11, in motion. Jabril Beeman. Listed as number eight in the rosters. 
Price throws this one deep towards the sideline and throws way beyond his receiver. Beeman not being able to catch that one, and it will be third down. And anybody know that, that knows Breezy or has ever spoken to him knows that he called for that go route six weeks ago. He called for that when I was still on the Renegades roster. And just really good coverage there. So CP3 puts it out there. A little bit too far, obviously, but great coverage from Sierra Hancock. And it'll bring up third and 17. You know, I don't know what the play action there was or if they, they thought that they were going to get away with one there. But, you know, to, to, to go for a shot on second and super long after a penalty, not necessarily a great play call, but... We'll see what they can do here on 3rd and 17. Jaquise Worley in our chat on A7FL.TV saying CPs and only throws that, pitches that ball, and leads blocks. Well, now, uh, back in our earlier days, that was a staple in our league. Watch this Vargas. matchup here. Baby Joker and Khalil Green at the bottom of your screen. The snap by Price on 3rd and 17. Price will throw this one. Will it be? And no, that'll be out of reach of the receiver, and it will be 4th down. And there's the young... Uh, that's number three getting the stop. Yes. Pardon me, that's Saeed or Hancock. Yeah, and you, and you see, the, you, you like the step up from CP3 in the pocket, but he dropped his elbow. Ball came out a little bit weird, and it'll bring up fourth and extremely long. People don't do it. Shocks me. Well, and and other leagues and, and, and situations constantly keep changing their own rules to make it safer and more interesting, but they just keep making it worse and worse. And it will be first and ten, the most exciting and longest running spring football playoffs. I'm Matt Ryan, joined alongside Corey Hammond as we on their path to crown our ninth A7FL champion, the handoff, and that will gain about four. Rush by number four. Money-making Mitch with the appearance. Now he's trying to hide under that Cowboys shysty there. And Huff goes, hurry up again. The snap. And hand it off to Mitch again. And That's a tough run. They're Mitchell. still giving him yardage. Mitchell Jenkins on the run. To make that kind of yardage after contact against Dondre Haynes and Samad Jenkins, of all people, great run there. And it'll bring up third and short. First Qua and ten. Quattro huffing on first down. The snap. Finds an opportunity. Throws it. Caught. Gets to the 39 and brought down hard by Khalil Green. And you just see the, the sudden nature in which Huff plays this game. There's no, there's no situation where he feels uncomfortable. And the way that he changes his base to throw the football on time to anybody, he goes, hurry up again to Moreto. Moreto. Finds a seam. Big in there, and it will be a huge play. Second and four, and it will be. A first down for Silk City as they drive here in the latter third of the first quarter. The handoff again to Marrero using that ground and pound and just continuing to keep that defense on their back foot. That hurry up is killing them. And there you see Trey Baskerville. And these are all basic plays. It's just they have no answer for them because they're still trying to figure out what to do. The snap, the handoff, and there's a flag on the play. Drew him open by... Here's the crack motion. Oh, and he almost hits him there. Throwing it off the hands. And then, oh, that was almost like a pick and roll. I always talk about the basketball references with Huff. I've never seen a play look more like a pick and roll. You see Lou Scheisty comes on the crack block, seals the edge, gets the initial hit. It looks like the defensive end, oh, I can make this play. But then you lose contain and, and coverage on the guy with the crack block. It's just a shame that he wasn't able to convert it with the catch. Bring up yeah. third down. Third and 13, two on the line, four wide receiver set. Baby Joker at the bottom of your screen. That's Gomez. Kenner Stewart in the slot. Luce Scheiste, Nieves in motion. Huff will run with it. He'll stay. He'll throw sidearm caught by Baby Joker. Gets the first down and brought down hard at the 40 and gets right in his face. First down, animals. Kenny Hall with a really good tackle and coverage there, but just a much better play from Huff with, with the basically submarine throw for the first down. Stops right on a dime at the line of scrimmage. Just look at this play here. He actually gets the seal. And if he wants, he can take off. The defense has to honor it. But look at the precise throw there to Baby Joker. But the most important thing is, is that his young player is able to convert and makes the catch. And it's first down for the Animals. The snap, and there's the handoff to Baby Joker. Baby Joker met in the wrong side of town and drags and almost stripped by, by in his clothes. Yeah, he, normally guys are going for the strip on the football there. They're going for uh, his jersey. But here's the third down again. He what throws throw. that ball before he even turns around. The anticipation there, and there's the double-O agent. 
Making men miss until Ooh. brought down Ooh. with a suplex. Matt, I'll let you talk about that wrestling move from Bigger. Spine, pine, Gerald Llewellyn digging into it and throwing one of the damnedest spine busters I've ever seen. It'll be second down. Well, Huff doesn't want us to be able to talk about any of these plays. This hurry up is throwing a kink in the Renegade's defense, our coverage, and the only people that are able to keep up are these, these guys who have been with them all season. And there's that bounce off the run. Pew and there it is again. Picks him up, gets the tackle, gets the stop. Whap! Just right on the shoulder. What a play. And Mamba stacks Khalil Green calling for the head top. And it looks like a timeout on the field. You see Lou Nieves at the top of your screen. Kenneth Stewart at the bottom. They tried to get away with a Baltimore special there, but everybody can see Baby Joker's hair. And there's the th Huffin will get on his bicycle. He'll cut through the defender. Baskerville will drag him down after Huffin gets the first down. And with 326 left to go, Quattro Huffin slicing and dissecting this yeah. Renegades defense. Yeah, and just when you thought the Renegades defense did a great job covering the play that was called, the last ditch effort for Huff in every play is just make it happen himself. And more often than not, he's going to do it. One wide receiver set, and now it'll be two. Stewart set out in motion. Nieves. Oh, pardon me. There's three wide receivers. Makes that quick set. Baby Joker set up to the left. And this is where they go option out of this look. A snap. Huff fades DeAndre Haynes and cuts to the sideline. Jukes inside, gets the first down, and will run out of play near the eleven. He makes it look easy. He makes everyone else look like it's super difficult for them. And that's a man, Dondre Haynes, and the only time that his extremely huge, ginormous size works against him is when Huff goes with the pump fake and slips right underneath his arm. That's a magician performing magic for all of you to enjoy at home. That's why, that's why when you're asking me who's going to win this game, like how do you pick against the guy who can do that when the entire play is broken down and the Renegades win by, based on the beginning of the play? Well, here's Huff. Number and 63 in motion. Our house is a very, very, very fine house, and there's a whistle on the play. That's Oye Marrero on the carry. And, and it if looks they like didn't blow that dead, Matt, you were going to have to give us another touchdown call because yep. that was nothing but grass in front of them. Something was illegal. That's how good that play was. Is the refs were like, nope, nope, something's wrong. In the fridge, number 63 on the line. The snap. Oye with the ball will run right into a pile, and it will be second down and a gain of about none. Well, they, they spot it basically right at the initial line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and 15. They go back into this jumbo formation. You see the fridge set up to the left, Oye, directly to the left, and you see Lushaisti Nieves at the top of your screen. Watch Ron Clark on defense. Snap, toss back, Huff with time. He'll roll out to his right. He's in trouble, throws it, caught by the lineman, Fridge. Fridge runs and just decides to say, I got here, and it will be third down. That's... That's Fridge, a longtime BIC guy. He wanted to get a lot more playing time. He has so far here with the Animals, and no one in the world thought that he was going to exit this game with a reception. But that's seven yards and third and eight. The quick screen to 35, and he's brought down. That's LaPera. I've been calling him JPP <laughs> Cleaver. <laughs> And they go fourth down, hurry up. Huff, makes Huff, Andre miss again. Bicycle. Huff will run inside, a hit, and brought in that touchdown. Quattro Huffin and the Animals putting it on the board, 13-7, 13-0. What and, a play. And when Huff decides that he's going to take it upon himself, what can you do as a defense? They played great defense that entire drive for most of the play. 90% of that drive was the Renegades winning on the way that the play was designed originally. The 10% that Huff was involved ad-libbing and doing it on his own is the difference in these teams and that drive and specifically that touchdown run. 
I'm and here's Ryan. Sierra Han- Hancock. I'm Matt Ryan, drawn by Corey Hammond. With the throw. And Khalil Green will get that one that bounced inside the 25. It's a live ball. Khalil Green will cut through two defenders and brought down. He got past Stewart. Was not able to get past the Greek beast, Ioannidis. It'll be first and 10 for Corey Price after being penalized twice on the first play of the drive. Had to give it up on fourth down. And now he comes out with two great running backs in Khalil Green and Mike Liberti. They're swapping them out to be wide receivers. Well, we look at the time left on the clock. There's 30 seconds left on the clock. So that means the entire first quarter was the animals running hurry-up offense and the Renegades having three plays and out. CP3, the Renegades, they've been rusty. They've been off for a really long time. But in first and 10 with their second drive, they better start moving the ball and getting something going on offense, or this might be a really short playoff stint from the Renegades and CP3 specifically. And you don't want to get into the discussion on whether or not this season was a failure, but there will be a lot of questions heading into the offseason about what's next for this team. It'll be first and 10. The clock ran. The handoff to Liberty. Liberty will cut to the other side. He'll get past Stewart. He will run through two players and brought down. First down, Liberty. That's a great run from Mike Liberty. He, uh, initially, the, the point of attack on that play was the right edge. He cuts it back with a great block from his quarterback, and he's able to explode for one of the best run plays we've seen from this team in weeks. Gain the first down on his first carry of the drive. They'll run it back to him again to start the second quarter. Cuts to the sideline. Mike Liberti will get past the 40, and they'll mark him down somewhere inside the 35. Pardon me, inside the 40, and it will be first down. And that's how easy it is for the Renegades. If they can just hand the ball off to Liberti and he can make stuff happen, then they can open up play action down the field. And CP3 is going to go with his huff impersonation with the hurry up. But a timeout will be called from the Animals to make sure that they don't get caught in the same position that their quarterback put the Renegades in. And you could say he was a part of Sterry Codrington's development, who we'll see next week. First and 10, the handoff to Khalil Green. Green will cut inside and brought down emphatically by number 30, and it will be second down. That's a pretty great defensive play there because it looked like Khalil Green might have been able to get a seam, but he's not able to, and that will bring up second and eight. Disseline, you see him on the screen on the tackle. The hand play action. Price makes a quick throw. Intercepted. Intercepted by number three. And that's a oh big boy. Happy birthday, bye, buddy. Bye. 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 Touchdown. Silk. City and shout out to Jaquan Mason going the entire run with them. What a play and a statement made by these young animals players. It's been a while since the Renegades won a playoff game, huh? Yeah. Wonder who their quarterback was then. I but you see here when he jumps, he is just wow. putting the ball in a bad spot. And now look, that's great coverage. And, and and he probably looked a lot more open when the ball was released. But if you're throwing a Dondre Haynes and it's underthrown, you're you're not taking advantage of his best attribute, which is that he is seven foot eight when his arms are up in the air. That was the interesting thing. We've seen Price throw for distance. He didn't throw for height on that one. Try to utilize the receiver. Well, and they went play. Here's the extra point from the 10, so that's a two-point extra point. Here's, Here's Bebo. Flag on the field. And he'll make it in. We'll see what the flag is, but that should count as two. What do some guys try to do? They try to sky throw it. Here's the interception again. Just bad form. He looks like he's wide open, so CP3 rushes to get to him. And it was That's a, just a great yeah. break on the ball from a cornerback that's gained a lot of experience. A great block by man to set him free. And just look how nonplussed he is making his way downtown. Just bye. Bye. Sometimes we've seen him be a liability in coverage. And here's the opportunity now for Green. Green cuts inside. Gets brought down hard by number double zero at the 49-yard line. So giving Corey Price and company probably their best field position of the afternoon. Yeah, and it's it's really tough. We, we, we got in the comments, one of one of our uh, fans in the comments, because it's 21 nothing already, said, GG, EO. Good game, that 21 nothing Madden rule and this, who's next <laughs> up on the sticks. But we still got plenty of football left. Now, if you're the... The Renegades didn't want to spot the Animals and Huff, who can call a great offensive game, 21 points. But you still have to maintain the course. Their best, their best go at it so far is when they hand the ball off to Liberty. And if they can continue to dominate a, in a running game, they'll eventually set up another opportunity for play action that won't go for six the other way. 
Price talking with Green. He'll set up to the right. Liberty at the bottom of your screen. Snap, and Price will keep it. Corey Price will cut towards the sideline. He'll cut around the defender. He'll plow through and get to the 24 and keep his team in it. First down East Orange, and there you see that knee brace. Price's knee, and you see him limping a little bit there, uh, Corey. Well, it didn't hinder him enough that time because after he throws the interception, he goes play action, and he does what he knows how to do best. He gets out there in the open field and makes everybody look like they're slower than him. That's a great play from Corey Price, and here's the handoff to Khalil Green. Green will cut to the right side, try to pressure through, and will get back to the line of scrimmage, and it will be second down. And shout out to our newest fan, Davis Emma Harry. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for watching. I'm Matt Ryan, joined alongside Corey Hammond. We're live here on A7FL.TV and internationally on the zone. It'll be second and 10 after getting back to the line of scrimmage. Khalil Green with the ball on that rush. Well, and you saw what this Renegades offense is when they're doing what they do best. CP3 is a great quarterback in this league. He's a championship winning quarterback in this league. Both of these quarterbacks championship winning quarterbacks in this league and what cp3 can do better than anybody is put your defense in a bad position if you give him a lane and on second and ten the the animals better know better than to give that man any space to to sneak through for a run quick screen to liberty liberty will be met at the line of scrimmage again tried to toss it back and he'll be stopped behind the line it'll be third down and right now the chaos up against the olatangi volcanoes in cincinnati 27 to nothing. So they're taking care of business as they should. You know, they, they obviously, the, the chaos, talking about the Sin City chaos in Cincinnati, not Sin City Vegas, they dominated the Ohio regular season. So if they do not dominate the playoffs, then maybe it's a red flag for what's going on up there. But back to this game, it's 21 nothing. So, you know, blowouts all across the board. Well, there's a lot of time left, and Price is driving downfield. You see him not there for the volcanoes, the there's not. Oh, <laughs> Well, there's plenty of time for the Renegades as we sit here with 11 minutes still in the second quarter. But for the Volcanoes, their season has, has been about to erupt since week one. The Volcanoes are a few minutes away from becoming dormant. And it will be third and 12 after the screen to Liberty. Four wide receivers, two on the line, and here comes the pressure immediately. Number 21 gets Price on his bicycle. Price gets tripped up, and that looked like Quattrall huffing on that, and it was huffing on that, but they'll call him for a flag, and it will be, and you see Flag getting huff frustrated with that call from the officials. And once again, Baby Joker's playing that off coverage on Khalil Green. The quick screen is there. Huff covering DeAndre Haynes. We saw Sayer Hancock cover him earlier. The throw by Price, Liberty oh! had a reach and a flag on the play. And it's definitely going to be defensive pass interference. The ball was placed perfectly to Liberty, who almost made the one-handed catch, but it'll still, in the end zone, pass interference should bring it to first and goal. And the best opportunity for the Renegades so far. They call that man Rocky Balboa, but he looks like a young Oscar De La Hoya trying to be a golden boy for the East Orange Renegades and get on the board here after the flag with 10.02 remaining in the first half. I'm Matt Ryan, Corey Hammond sitting right next to me. Big Rob Fabian in the chat celebrating his birthday. Shout out to him. Shout out to Bachata Bob, a.k.a. Henny Robert. Pass interference on the defense was the call. So the Renegades getting a little bit of an opportunity here to get their best field position of the day on the five-yard line, inside the five-yard line. They're set up at the two, and it will be first and goal. The clock running down now, 9.36 and counting for the Renegades. And they'll have four attempts in here. There's no kicking, so all they got to do is gain one yard. The snap, the handoff, Green tries to Superman it and then gets sent back into obscurity like Soldier Boy. And it's Ford Sr. with the stop, and it will be second down. He goes for the dunk and gets denied. There's a lot of What's basketball What's the opposite reference? of being posterized? <laughs> you take, it's cellophane. And here we see the, the play again. I mean, there was basically an invisible oh. Makembe Mutombo block there on Khalil Green's body. And it'll be CP3. CP3 gets and, <laughs> and runs right into the defender and will be stopped. And it will be third down. Ryan Rios on the tackle. Thought he was going to be able to get the edge. Isn't. Goes for the cutback. Doesn't get it. Third and goal from the one. And it will be third and goal. 
A timeout called by the Renegades. They'll burn their second timeout here. You are putting yourself in trouble. And there's Deandre. Deandre Haynes, all six foot seven of them. He will run it in. He'll push through. Yeah, how are you stopping that man? And there's a flag on the play. Yellow will do it. False start on the Renegades, and with a great Corstradamus situation, seeing the six foot, you know, thirty quarterback coming in for the quarterback sneak. And they will go to the six-yard line. They, they will lose five. Now, now sometimes I actually oh. prefer a little bit of space, but again, you know, ask the Schnow tribe. I call the I call pass plays too much, so more space to throw the ball is better. But for a quarterback like CP3, it's also better for him because it opens up the running lanes because you now can attempt a pass play, which then, you know, maybe gives CP3 the type of lane that he needs to get into the end zone. But we went from first and goal from the one to now third and goal from the six. This is going to be a tough non-conversion for the Renegades to recover from if they're not able to punch it in here in these next two plays. Green at the top of your screen, Liberty in the slot. Set up on the six-yard line. DeAndre Haynes on the offensive line. The animal's looking to rush four, and here comes the pressure thrown, and that's swatted on a defense. <laughs> throwing below to yeah. DeAndre Haynes, throwing low to DeAndre, I saw, and it'll be fourth down. I saw it before on the interception. CP3 was off of his base, you know, his footwork, and he jumped to throw it. You see there with a quick throw, it's almost as with him coming off of the injury, he's playing a little bit differently, especially when he's, you know, viable to take a hit. You look at the replay there, you know, as I see it on my other screen, and he just is off balance, off base, and isn't able to d deliver the ball in a catchable place for his quarterback, I mean, for his receiver. And with a man in his face, you understand it, but now it's fourth and goal in a must-have situation, and the Renegades, they loved this drive four plays ago. <laughs> now they're sitting here thinking, how are we getting this in against this animal's defense? Knock three times on the window if you want me. And that is what the Renegades are saying to six points on the board. CP3 on fourth and goal. On his bicycle. Now with the 25. Thrown to the end zone. And caught. Touchdown Renegades. What a play by mid number seven. That's Quadu. Quadu does it. On fourth down, CP3 to his last option, thought he could run it, rolls back, finds his man, and we, I actually thought that was an interception for a second. That man had in bad intentions in his eyes when he stared down the camera. And look Here's at this, the he thought he's gonna take the edge, but then it's not there. It's fourth down, so he has to make the best play for his team. You see his speed, gets the corner, Pretty good block there by Rob just to rock it just to get in the way. And then when he releases the ball, everyone in the building thinks that that's going to be what a the catch. former renegade Kenneth Stewart, what number seven, a, catching it. Look at that but it's man. Quah. That man is here to do business, and they'll go for two from the ten. You I know what love that, this job. You know what that look says? Hey, whoever runs the Instagram for A7, can you finally put me on here? I'm going to stop sending messages with, with my phone and give you the message with my eye after a great touchdown in the playoffs. And, sir, you might just have fished your wish. Again, this is going to be an extra point from the 10, which makes it a two-pointer. And this will be a great way for the Renegades to make up some difference here if they're able to get it. What a great conversion from the Renegades. Liberty. And that's not the way that that play was supposed to go. Kwa no, is so <laughs> Kwa is so happy with himself. He's just out there wrecking the play. Wacky but somehow racers. it's still going to work. Oh, what a defensive play intended for number 23. Mike and, Rose Hendricks is getting up and, and not knowing exactly if he's he woke up in New York still or if he's, <laughs> he's in Asbury Park. I'm not sure. And I don't know what my man is doing back there at the 20. He's going to go for the... Uh, the super run and throw. I don't know if that's the, the best situation. What is he doing? Why throw it back there? And that one it's obviously won't not going to go the... far enough. Oh, my goodness. I guess they were trying to just make enforce no, the dead ball does, run. That's a new guy that we've never seen in this league that's before. That's And he knows he's on television. And, ladies and gentlemen, i am never do this, but he choked. He choked. He threw it from the 20. He didn't make it to the 35. And he, now. He might, he might not be a member of the Schnow tribe, but he melted under the bright lights right oh, there. Oh, Absolutely. Which 
it may be a thing about snow. It Trevor melts. Narlock asking, is Big Rob suiting up with the U on his birthday or what? I don't believe Henny Robert will be taking the field today. Listen, he doesn't play against teams like the Snow Tribe. <laughs> Dead ball run here for double zero. Dem -dem. Ooh, 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 presses through. It gets called down at the 45. Ball almost came out there. It looked like that gentleman was going to run. Double zero dub was going to run that one to the house with a man on his ankles. Because why? Why? Why not? Because they're, they're trying to put the animals in a bind right now. Bebo in motion again. And there's the handoff. Nope. Huff will keep it. Huff will throw it. And that's caught by... That's Macho. Macho number one getting the catch. That's Joshua Ortiz on the reception, and it will be second down. And, yes, that is the villain from the uh, Gru movies, <laughs> Despicable Me Too. That is Macho. He was swallowed by a shark in a volcano, and now he plays in the A7FL. Here's the quick screen. Quick screen. Bebo. Plows through, will get to the first down marker, but a flag on the play. And you see that last play action play to Huff. You saw Trey Baskerville bearing down on him. You see the defensive pressure is all over him. But Huff was able to find Macho. Here's a false start penalty on that last play. Eh, sometimes those quick screens are a little too quick, Matt. Mm, just a, Borderline just a illegal at that yeah. point. Well, when you're, you're skating on that one, false start on the offense. But the, the last play that counted was that play action. You saw Huff roll out. That's the difference so far in this game. When, when Huff's done that, he's thrown the ball on target. CP3's missed, but great touchdown for CP3 in the last drive. And now we'll see what Huff can do on first and 15. 6.09 left to play. Wide receiver in motion, the handoff, play action, thrown over the middle, caught. Cuts inside and brought down at the 20, and that's picked up by number 15. And Bebo has been that reliable target or running option for the animals all year. We talk a lot about Lou Scheiste. We talk a lot about Kenneth Stewart and Baby Joker and even John Kessler, the original Joker. But Bebo seems to always make a couple of plays here for this offense, and there he converts the first down. Marrero set up to the left. He'll take the ball. Nope. Uh, Huff he will pointed. Keep it. Quattro huffing, dropping the points. Pointed. Slides in there. Touchdown, Silk City. And he's waving hello to players on the Patterson U playing at 4 o'clock. Oh, his adoring fans. He's so many fans in this league. And by fans, I mean players that are really upset about the decision he made maybe earlier this year. But is that going to be a touchdown? Is that going to be a flag? I was it too embarrassing to point? No, that was a touchdown. That counted as a touchdown. So we'll wave off the flag. The animals score another brilliant touchdown. And They'll we'll see if the it. Renegades can hold firm like the animals did. And there's the handoff inside. And that is Mitchell Jenkins putting six on the board. 26 to six. Pardon me, 27 to six. The animals putting six on the board and continuing to build their lead. So they get it, they get it in, they punch it in, money making Mitch cashes in, and we'll see if they go for one or two. And it's 27 to 6, 428 left to go, making the play, and now they will go for one at the five. They will only put two on the line, and they will spread the offense out wide. Four wide receivers. Stewart at the bottom. Or that's Kenneth Stewart at the bottom of your screen. The snap, and the Huff hands it off to number 35, and they'll put it up, on, put it on the board. LaPera with the play, and now it's 28 to 6. The lead for the Silk City Animals continuing to grow. We expected this game to be closer defensively, but the Silk City Animals are throwing everything they can at the Renegades, and the Renegades cannot get a stop when it counts. Green has the opportunity to return at any time, but it looks like Quattro Huffin will be throwing it, and he's going to try to do a high-arcing throw. Throws it from the 33, and that one will be inbounds, and Green will catch it around the 15. He will Ooh. get past double zero. Dub zero getting eaten up by the turf monster, but Huff setting him up, and Green getting some solid return yards, but not enough to put six on the board. So CP3 will have to drive here, 428 left to go. They have one timeout, but they also have the two-minute warning, and they have the chance 
to get the ball back. They have to get the ball back at halftime. Well, and 428 sounds like plenty of time for most offenses. But what we've seen from the Renegades this year with CP3 under the center is, yeah, they're definitely able Some to move people, the ball. But they take forever sometimes. Remember those drives against BIC I was that about took to entire bring that quarters? Up. Was that that was the thing that got in the way of them possibly winning that game? They took they were too methodical. They took too much time. It felt like they weren't confident in what they were putting out there and were continuing to try to revise. And I understand that level of perfectionists, perfectionism, as it were, making up words here on the broadcast. But well, I mean, you look at it now. It's it's four four minutes, and they haven't even called a play because the clock's been running. They're going to have to have some type of urgency, especially because they're down. But with only four minutes left in the half, they got to figure out a way to, to complete some passes. First and ten, the handoff to Liberty. Liberty in trouble, immediately smothered and covered and sent to the Waffle House. It'll be second down. He's brought down at the 24-yard line. Yeah, and, and, and to start the drive off, they've been able to get that play off most of the times that they've called it for positive yards. But now they lose yards, and it's even more incumbent on the quarterback to complete passes downfield. And bring up second and 16. And then you see Rose Sr., Mike Rose Hendricks, talking with CP3 inside that huddle. And a lot of options on this Renegades offense. It just seems like what it, component parts that don't click. What, what are they missing? What are the things that can well, bring them together? What's the sinew to fuse muscle and bone? Well, if they were able to have this collective group for seven weeks in the regular season and, and develop a, a firm identity of tons of formations that they could just go to real quick in the huddle and they don't have to design much, then they feel a little bit more comfortable in this situation. Now they got to call it on the fly and see what they can do. You see the miscommunication there and where people are going. And watch the coverage at the top of your screen. The snap. Quick screen. That's bubbling. Accepted. Number 21 and of the that's man. man is his name, cousin on the back of his jersey. And Matt Ryan saw it correctly. Mike Rose Hunt Hendricks, who is a vet in this league, was so wide open on the quick screen, CP3 had to take it. The fact is, is that if you drop it and then, and then it bounces into a corner that was playing 12 yards off, that's on the receiver. And it seems like whatever the the Renegades can do to get in their own way, and that ball right off the hand. That's perfectly and placed that's, if you want to give that, it to yeah. a, a guy with a chance to look in front of him. Most guys are going to catch that and not even have to put their eyes on it because it's right to their hand. CP3 delivers a perfect throw. Mike Rose Hendricks, man, for a guy who's been in this league and in this game. So well, here goes the play. And there's Huff. With time, we'll throw this one to the end zone. Wide open to Kenneth Stewart. Touchdown, Animals. And the Young Bull putting six more on the board. And the Animals looking to rev up like Wave Racer 64 and turn it into a jet ski race. That's the difference between these two teams. The, the Renegades are still trying to figure out who they are because there's no consistency in their roster. Huff has got this team to a point where they know who they are, they know what to do, and on the turnover, they go for the throat, they go to the former Renegade. 34-6. to six. And we see here on the play action, they bit so hard on that play action. And just finding time, Huff buggy whipping that ball. He pitched that to the end zone wide open. Was the young bull, Kenneth Stewart. And perfect execution from the Animals. The toss back to double zero. This man pushes through, trying to, oop, tried to look for the toss back and brought down. Will they give it to him? He looked like he crossed the plane. They say he did not get there. And it's now 34 to 60, 34 to 6. And it looks like there might be an injury on the field. It's just hard because you can see the, the, the level of competition here. It ramps up when we're talking about the Watchmen. That's a Baltimore super team. And here's the three on one throw off of Malik Walker with the return. Walker will get brought down. The ball comes Fumbles. loose. Ball comes loose. Who comes ball up with out. it? Picked up by Huff. Quattro Huff and getting the ball out and delivering it to the Renegade sideline. Quattro Huffin is on one today. And there you see CP3 as Huff continues to make a statement against Corey Price. You play out of position. You play a little tired. You, you try to make the play, the, the extra play. And here's a play action again from Huff. 
Huff throws it towards the end zone. Baby choker brought in there. Touchdown. Silk City getting right up in their face, making them know what his name is. No spice, no ice running through the veins. Baby Joker putting six more on the board. 40 to six in this first half, Matt. 40 to six. And if we had any questions about the playmakers for the animals in today's game, they have answered in resounding fashion. We have an interception for a touchdown from a rookie. We just have a touchdown catch on somebody from a rookie. And earlier we saw Kenneth Stewart with his own answer to his former team. Animals are geared up and ready to go for this playoff run. They are putting in there Graciela Rodriguez saying huepa, very much a huepa necessary play. Loud Wilkes with some interesting commentary and they will hold it. Hoff on the one point attempt will skate and get brought oh. down. Ball will come loose, but it's a dead ball play. And That's a Ron Clerk sighting. Yeah, Ron Clerk putting it on the board. And when you hear names like Ron Clerk, you hear names like Baskerville, you hear names like DeAndre Haynes, and we see it here. Quattro Huffin trying to make his way to the championship. We'll be back. Take a look at the highlight. Of the A7FL, go to a7fl.com slash championship. That's a7fl.com slash championship. And use the code A7FL Insider for 25% off tickets until midnight. That ball's in the end zone. That's a live ball. Khalil Green will cut through a defender. He'll push through, and he will lose a mouthpiece, and he will be stopped by the defender, a flag on the field. Everything is just going wrong for the Renegades. They, they can't seem to find anything that works. That's another situation. Khalil Green is a is one of the top three-on-one returners in the Northeast, traditionally, usually. That's just a bad situation. Great throw from Huff, and we'll see what the penalty is here. Snap. A quick screen. That's to Khalil Green. He'll make one defender miss. He'll be button his way to keeping this play alive. Cuts up field as Khalil Green tries to ski out of it, and it will be brought down. And it will be, it looks like they might, the flag on the play possibly. It'll be second down. Well, they got the quick screen and they make the catch there. We'll see what the penalty is. It looks like it's on the animals. They're moving it forward. But uh, that's just the ability for Khalil Green in the open field to make men miss. <laughs> that play should then have been a, a zero yard gain, if any, um, as soon as he cut it back towards the teeth of the defense. And it looks like it'll be a... Or it will be a first down for the You see right Renegade. here, he should have definitely been down, but credit his team for picking up the rest of his blocks. They're still fighting in here, still trying to itch their way back into the game. And Mike Liberti just wanted to comment on how he liked number 15's jersey. He was just grabbing and saying, the fabric is beautiful, it's lovely. Yeah, Silk City for real. <laughs> It'll be first and 10. Ball placed at the 50-yard line. 90 seconds left to go. The Renegades have no timeouts left. DeAndre Haynes, an eligible receiver. He's the big man, set up in the tight end position. Khalil Green in motion, the snap by Price. The throw by Corey Price, out of reach for Khalil Green. And we saw Saeer Hancock try to get his second interception of the day. In motion, number 11. The snap that was uh, D'Angelo Brown. The throw to a birdie, out of reach, and it will be third down. Yeah, and, and, and that crossing route, Mike Liberti was open as soon as he got to the middle Perfect. of the field. But when he reached the other edge of it, the coverage tightened up and nowhere for CP3 to put the ball and to bring up third and 10. Right now, it does not look like CP is on the same page as his receivers, whether it's, it's him working off of the rust of all those weeks off, you know, getting back into game shape, playing shape or whether it's his receivers are not in the, the spots on the field that he expects them to be. The passing game for the Renegades is, is looking a little rough right now, and down 34, CP is going to be able to get some yardage, you know, running the ball from the quarterback position when he can. But for them to win, he's going to have to continue to complete passes, and since the touchdown pass, he's been a little off target. Minute eight left to go. It'll be a two-wide receiver set. In motion, the snap. Price throws it out of the hands of the receiver. That was Quadu Garrett who caught the only touchdown for the Renegades, disappointed with himself. And it'll be fourth and 10 and another wasted opportunity for the Renegades. And now with a minute five left, either have to go 10 yards or seed the ball. They're going for it here yeah, on they, fourth down. 
this point in the playoffs, you have to believe in your team. You have to believe that you can get it. And if you just give the ball back to the animals, one minute is plenty of time for Huff, as we've seen, to score a touchdown still. So that out was there, and all of these receivers have found space in the defensive secondary. It's just we need to find a way to get on the same page and for the quarterback to find his receivers for at minimum 10 yards here on fourth, fourth and 10, and that sounds like obviously, duh, but it's been an issue all day for the Renegades. And it, one thing, if there is anything that we can say about CP3, he's a clutch player, and just like on the fourth and goal, his attributes, guys, if we're talking about Madden, they just went up 10 points on fourth down. He's going to have to get to the 40-yard line. Price will cut. He will find a way. He'll throw it and swat it. Thrown right to Chauncey Mulligan. He swats the ball out of the hands of Khalil Green, and it will be first and 10 for the Animals. Quattro Huffin getting the ball back with 58 seconds and one timeout left to go in the half. And that's the risk you take on fourth down going for it is you're going to give it back to him anyway. You just give him a more manageable situation. <laughs> and the last two plays, Matt, for the Silk City Animals, they've been touchdown passes, so... Watch out for the play action up top situation, but you see Milligan, his his mood is the is the mood of the day for Silk City. And it will be first and ten. Uh, shout out to our chat. If you're not joining us on a7fl.tv and or on our YouTube channel, if you're on our YouTube channel, like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you know when we are live with the A7FL games of the week and the playoffs. And let me just say, Loud M. Wilkes with one of the uh, quotes of the day in our live comments on YouTube. Here's Huff. Huff on first and ten. Looking like AI in 01, evading defenders, and we'll throw that one incomplete. And when your team's down and you're a leader, you see CP. Now he's on defense, rushing Huff. He didn't get the sack there, but the pressure causes an incompletion. I'm Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. 50 seconds left to go in the half. The Renegades will get the ball at the half. Crew Paul three. Oh, nice. my goodness. And if you want to have your voice heard on the three-on-one podcast, call in 516-387-A7FL after the game. It'll be up this week on the podcast. A handoff to double zero and drop down behind the 49. And it will be third down, continuing to put the pressure. And this has been one heck of an afternoon. For the animals specifically. And, and here's here's the hurry up and quick throw. And up throw. Double zero, moving the ball, brought down inside the 40. And Big Angry is his namesake after the score's been what it is today, but Huff with the hurry up. 17 seconds is plenty of time. Here's Kenneth Stewart on the sideline. And he gets out of bounds. Of, and that will stop the clock with 11 seconds left to go. And it is 41 to 7, chaos. Oh, so Cincinnati. the Volcano scored then. That's the upset of the day. And Huff. No huddle, throws it to the sideline. Kenneth Stewart will run out of play with eight seconds and get the first down. You see the presence of mind. That's two quarterbacks there. That's former Renegades quarterback, Kenneth Stewart, catching the ball, getting out of bounds, making sure he gets the first down. And how important is this game for Kenneth Stewart? I mean, I think this season's been really important for him. Here's Huff again with the hurry up. And, the, and a flag on Behind the play. Behind back? Come on. That would have been complete, too. Oh. Little upset. For, for those not seeing the YouTube comments, my guy Jaquise Worley is asking us to call Big Angry Little Upset. Little Upset is actually his younger brother that is copying him. Here's... Off the screen. Shakima McCutcheon with the throw! Thrown and almost intercepted, and that one will end the half. And at the end of 30 minutes of football, the Silk City Animals got the ball first, got the lead first, and never let go. They're trying to make their way to the A7FL Championship. Go to a7fl.com slash championship for more information. One second, actually, the, the clock was wrong. One second left on the clock here in the first half. So Huff and the Huffables trying to put six more on the board. Earlier this season, we saw Shaquem McCutcheon, the former U offensive lineman, number 50 right there. And there's a TBS situation there. That's, we're going to have to get a TBS calendar, guys. <laughs> there, there's, there's November right there in the back of your screen. But Shaquem McCutcheon with the almost touchdown pass. We've seen him make a one-handed catch, Matt. For him to have had a touchdown pass on this season in the playoffs, 
would have been something special for TBS fans everywhere. And here's Huff, last play of the half for sure this time. Big angry, Thrown chasing him. Thrown to the end zone, and that one will be out of play, out of reach. Little black submarines known as the Silk City Animals have, tie, has, have shot a torpedo through the bow of the Renegades. Will they be able to find a way back? Will they be able to find a way to fight it? They have the ball at the half. When we return, we'll have stats, highlights, and a whole lot more. Quattro Huff and trying to move on. We'll be back in a moment at CA7 NFL Playoffs. And it will be a dead ball run from the 25. Gets past the 40 to the 50. We'll try to cut around the three defenders. Gets past double zero, but gets caught into the trap at number 15. And it will be first and 10 for the East Orange Renegades as they start off the third quarter with the ball. And the Renegades, CP3 and Co., they, they got to start completing some passes down the field. They have eight yards passing in the first half. That's not enough to even stay close. And with the score 40-6, to six, you know, if this was a regular season game, we would be talking about next week. Well, problem for the Renegades is there's no next week in the A7FL playoffs, especially when you're losing 40-6 to six to the Animals. If we're talking about next week <laughs> and we're talking about it this early, we're talking about the Animals' chances against the Baltimore Super Team and the Watchmen. But right now with the Renegades, they got the ball in their hands. They got Jody Myers wearing the Predators jersey, and they got Khalil Green and Mike Liberty. They have the players on offense to make some plays. It's up to the quarterback to get them the ball. And whether or not they will have some Holy Spirits playing for them in the second half, the East Orange Renegades down 40-6. to six, Throwing deep here on the first ball of the half. Caught by Khalil Green. And a revelation. Button six on the board. Touchdown, Renegades. No Tommy Shaw needed there. Running right into the end zone. The jig is up. And it's 40-12. to 12. And Michael Faith had a question. What if Denzel gave a uh, remember the Titans speech at the half? <laughs> Maybe he did. Because CP3 right on cue. They needed to complete a pass to get back in this game. And and basically, with no time off the clock, they put six up on the board. And we'll see again here on the replay. Play action. You see the cross, the deep cross from Khalil Green. The ball hangs up just enough for him to catch the ball. And he gets a free run to the end zone. That's a good start. And as Gerald DePaul said, was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Don't stop him. He's on a roll. CP3 on the first play of the half, looking to right the ship, only taking 45 seconds off the clock. And now we'll go for what seems to be two from the 10-yard line. What a play. Yeah, and that's a great way to start the half, and that's a great way to get back on board. And if this is the Renegades offense that we've seen all game, this is a different score. Because they probably would have controlled the ball a little bit more, wouldn't gave up six and, and other, you know, turnovers to the animals. And this might be a closer game. But that's a good way to get started. And we'll see what they can do here trying to get two on the extra point. And we'll see an opportunity here. You see Quadu Garrett setting up on the offensive line. Press on the handoff and will not get the extra point. That was an interesting choice. Yeah, I, I more than anybody, love Jody Myers games. That's a, Matt, that's a guy that played with me on the Warriors a long, long time ago. But on, you know, 10 yards to go on an extra point, running the ball, interesting call there. The path to crowning an A7FL champion may start today, but all roads lead to the desert. Join us July 23rd as we crown the ninth A7FL champion live at Anderson Automotive Fieldhouse. Tickets are available now at a7fl.com slash championship. Save 25% until midnight using the code A7FL Insider. But Still a good movie. Check oh, it out. Yeah, great movie of its time. I don't know how. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily translate I don't know how well it now. ages. And there's the throw. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Inside the 15, an opportunity, and brought down. That's Bebo, number 15, brought down at the 31. And you just see the face there. Trey Baskerville, number 15 for the Renegades. He's had a defensive player of the year type of season. And basically, when you look at this, man, ah, he's got to feel a little bit disappointed. And here's the hurry up. And here comes the pressure off the hurry up. Double zero gets the ball. And he will cha-cha slide across the defender. Get past Baskerville. And he will run towards the sideline. Cuts up field. Gets to the 20 at the 15. Almost stripped and brought down at the 14-yard line. And the Renegades were looking at our chat. 
hopefully Big Rob, you're doing okay. He's he's laughing, crying, and, and emojis and, and things. But I, I'm I'm if too old to know what that means. If, if he he's actually upset, I don't know. If he replied to a text. <laughs> well, if he was in urgent care, maybe that's why he did it. Well, then don't be in the chat then. <laughs> but but the Renegades, they're looking at the chat. They're concerned about Big Rob. They weren't really necessarily concerned about this play. And after a great throw from CP3, the defense lets up 60 yards to our friend, Agent Double Zero and Huff. Right back to the hurry up. Oye set up to the right of Huff, and there will be a handoff to Marrero. Marrero will get to the 10 and gain about four, and it will be second and six. He does a little bachata there to get uh, a little bit of yardage there. And that's that play action. And, and after so many play actions for touchdowns, you see the lane open up because they think it's going to be a throwing play. It'll be second and six. A handoff to Marrero again. Third straight running play for the Animals. And he will not get the ball first down. Ball, came out. ball came out. And we'll see who gets it. And it looks like the ball was dead. And the refs are saying it's third down. So CP3 is calling for a replay. Even if it isn't an actual turnover, this is probably a good move because the chance at the ball back is exactly what the Renegades need. And we'll see here the handoff to Marrero. And almost knocked out the first time. And he's still got the ball here. Ball comes out there. And it's hard to see whether or not... If the ball was called a fumble. Matt Ryan joined by Corey Hammond. Big Rob Fabian off this week for his birthday. He'll be back with us next week. Three wide receivers set, two on the line. Almost trying to pull a flag there. Price throws this one deep, intended for Liberty. Into the pocket of Mike Liberty. He can't keep it in bounds, but runs out of play at the 43, and it will be first and 10 for the Renegades. That was a great double move by Mike Liberty. He was that wide open because on the second move, he left all defenders completely in the dust. And here's the replay here. Plenty of time for CP3 in the pocket, and there's just nobody there. And Green and Liberty will flex out to the bottom of your screen. Liberty in the slot, Green at the bottom. The side, oh, flag on the play, and it looks like uh, the animals it's might have jumped. Play. It's a free play. Gets the ball to Khalil Green. Green down the sideline. Looking to put six more on the board. Brought down at the 11, inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. And we'll see what the penalty is, but if that's a free play for the Renegades, that's a huge free play for the Renegades. And CP3 doesn't quit on it, gets it out to Khalil Green, and that's the kind of guy you need to give the ball in space. And if they uh, decline the penalty, it'll be first and goal. What would you do, Matt? You decline it? Yeah, I decline it. Oh. First, and ten, first and ten off of that. Just getting the defense and catching the animals sleeping, getting the, the quick. The Giving quick. a new definition to taking what the defense gives you. If the defense <laughs> gives you a free play, take it, run it, almost score with it. And time, a time out. out. Called by the animals. And one half of our Ohio championship is confirmed. The Sin City Chaos will make the trip for the first time ever in their first season to the A7FL Ohio Championship game. They will play the winner of our 4 o'clock matchup, the Covington Heist and the QC Crush, a rematch of our 2022 Ohio Championship. And it'll be very interesting to see who will walk out with that one. And... Boy, well, I, it has been an exciting second half, and we are only five minutes into the half. Yeah, and, and this game seems like it's going forever, and both of these teams have been employing the hurry-up. So it, it, a lot of things have been happening to, to kind of confuse us, and the most confusing thing so far is, is where is this Renegades team that we're seeing right now in that first? I, they, they must have gotten Denzel Washington to give a speech. <laughs> Either that or they got some of Michael's secret stuff from Space Jam. Come on and slam into the end zone out of the reach of the receiver. Brought down by Quattro Huffin, and it'll be second down. They go quick screen fake to Khalil Green, and, and Breezy Beeman was flying on that slant wide open. Credit Quattro Huffin for getting there to break it up, but again, CP3 jumps and throws and just not enough sauce on the play, and that's why it's tipped. Brings up second and goal. And it will be second and goal. Matt Ryan joined by Big Rob Fabian. It has been, uh, pardon me, by Corey Hammond. Big Rob Fabian's birthday today. Sorry. That's I was okay. Thinking, I was hey, sitting next to Corey Hammond. I didn't even notice. I didn't even <laughs> notice that because I, I just hear you say that and I just assume we're going right back to the play. Quattro Huffin 
It's almost like Rob is here, though. We do have the leg room that we normally don't in this situation, (laughs) which is the only reminder that he's not. (laughs) Shout-outs to the birthday boy. Hope everything's going well. I don't know why you're in urgent care. Uh, His daughter got bit by a tick, but she's okay. Okay, great. That she's okay, not the tick. Yes. Stupid ticks. Except for the cartoon one. It was cool. Yes, and and they actually did a live action one that that yeah. one when you were gone, somebody said that I looked like him. I've you, never you seen do it. You look like Patrick Warburton. You look like a uh, putty from Seinfeld. Okay. Oh, the guy that talks like this. Yeah, the, the talks like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's Kronk in uh, <laughs> Emperor's New Groove. You know the one that tried to kill Cusco, Isma, that Isma. And it will be first. Throw it to Liberty. Throw it to Liberty. Nobody's covering him. He can cut right through quick. No Quick, hair, cut, no cut hair, don't outside. care. Short hair, don't care. Throw it to him. Give him his cerebral touchdown. Come on, Ryan DePaul needs it. Just snap the, uh, just creating some confusion, loading up the line, and now Huff can tail Liberty if they have that opening. The snap, Liberty, no, Khalil Green, open. CP3 in trouble, having to skate, evades the defender, but brought down. And it looks like they overthought that play, Corey. They tried to make too many changes at the line, disaligned with the sack. Well, and that's the type of play that you see Huff execute. He's putting guys back and forth in motion, creating that matchup. It When that play started, you had the matchup that you kind of wanted. A quick throw to Liberty, who is really hard to take down in the open field, especially for a cornerback type. But when they put Qua in motion... Huff comes back into the frame. Immediate pressure from the defensive line for the animals. And as many times that CP3 can make a man miss, he just doesn't have that last gear to get the final push and get the opening. So credit to the animals' defense. But a third, a second and goal from inside the 10 is now third and goal from, I think, the 20. Not a good look for the Renegades, but from the 25. Those Dondre sh- Hayne, bottom of your screen. That's Sierra Hancock on him. Third and goal, and there will be a whistle dead ball play again. And if you're just joining us, another false start on the Renegades. It looked like delay of game somehow. And I know it was talking for a long time there in between plays, but they don't have to score it here. They just have to get enough yardage to make it an e- easier fourth and goal conversion. The snap. Price will keep it. Price will run it. He'll get inside the 15 to the 10 to the 5. He's carried and brought down. Dessaline and Bebo on the tackle. And Bebo getting right into the face of Corey Price, who's nonplussed by it and will get to the fourth and goal inside the 5. And as great of a tackle as that looked, it's a better play from CP3 to get all that yardage back. This is where he excels, and this is where he's elite. And when he gets into the 10, into the scoring position, you almost think he's going to score. But fourth and goal from the five, Matt, is manageable. (laughs) Third and goal from the 30 was not it. So getting that 25-yard run is huge, and the Renegades look to get back on the board. Again, fourth and goal at the five. We go inside the huddle. There you see Khalil Green. You see Quagati. That's Quadu Garrett, who's got the first touchdown of the day for the Renegades in the first half. And you can see an art. It is contentious inside that huddle, and... Is chemistry a big part of the problem why they're down 40 to 12? Well, and when you keep switching who it is is that's calling plays and is the signal caller week in and week out, some guys think that they're going to take it upon themselves in the huddle. Fourth and goal. Thrown to Haynes. Out of reach of the big man. And there in lies the story of the renegade season. Cor- <laughs> Khalil Green pointing out that he was open. Chauncey Mulligan. In on the stop, and Quattro Huffin will get the ball back and have to go 95 yards to put it back into the end zone. And it wasn't that the, the players on the field that during that drive didn't have opportunities and, and the ability to make plays. It's that they didn't, in the huddle, have the play call that they felt comfortable with on fourth and five in a must-need situation, and they, uh, they, they were just hoping that CP3 was going to make it happen magically. It doesn't, and... Look, with 6.08 left in the third quarter, you're likely going to get the opposite of a hurry up from Huff here where he's going to run the ball, grind out the clock, get to next week, and their opportunity in the second round against the Watchmen. So great drive there from the Renegades. Kind of what we expected from their offense all day, but not enough on fourth down. And here's Huff. And with 6.08 left to play, 
The 95-yard sojourn begins with a handoff to Oye Marrero, and Marrero will get brought down by Trey Baskerville, and it will be second down. <laughs> that was a fingertip tackle. <laughs> he threw him down like he, like he weighed as much as a playing card. Oh, they go hurry up. Hurry up, and Huff will keep it. Quattro Huffin pitches it out to the sideline to double zero, and he'll get past the 10 and the 15-yard line, and it will be first down for the Animals, who I believe don't have at least some timeouts left. Well, what's interesting there is they go hurry up, and you, you might think that that's not a good look as they go hurry up again, but the Renegades have no answer for it. They can't. They can't get a. They can't find a yield sign. Baskerville gets caught up in the turf. Dub zero pressing through will get near the 19. Get to the 14. The 24. Pardon me. And it will be second down. Well, they go with that that patented fake dive and then underhand toss, almost like an RPO situation. There's Ron Clerk, a 7 fl veteran and legend. And again, they go hurry up. On the 20. Huff on the 21, but the ball marked at the 24. And there's the toss over to 35, and the man who looks like Bob Backlund getting the first down. Oh, he's not Opie, but the Opie-ish looking gentleman getting yeah. to the 35. Well, I've, I've, called him, I've called him JPP Cleaver, both JPP and Wally Cleaver when he had that cast on. <laughs> but now Wally is just able to get into motion. Nobody's covering him. Huff throws it to him. First down conversion. Animals on the move again. First and 10, 425 off the quick screen, off the hands of the receiver. And that was number eight. Huff Lou loves Nieves. that play. He loves that play. We've criticized Kenneth Stewart for dropping it earlier. There's Lou Scheiste dropping it. That's a hard play to make when you're a receiver. Yeah, Huff putting it on you right. Pause. Huff is putting it right where your hands are. Rob wasn't here, so I had to pause myself. But that's a bullet at three yards away. Tough to catch that. Kenneth Stewart in motion. He'll flex that off the screen and gets to the 39 and brought down. There's that, there's that version of the motion quick bubble screen. I don't even know what we want to call it there, but Kenneth Stewart's able to make the catch, gets a couple of yards, and that's why Huff likes to do it. It's a safe play, and it'll bring up a manageable third down. Hurry up. Seven. Huff in trouble. Will throw. Trying to see if he caught that one. They They're will give him the first down, and they will mark it at the 44. And that's his third read. Huff goes with the hurry up. Nobody's ready. But then once the pressure finally does come, he has to look one, two, three, backside comeback, first down. That's how you execute a 7FL offense. It'll be first and 10, 309 left to go in the first quarter. We open the quarter with an East Orange Renegades score. Since then, turnover on downs from the Renegades, and before that, an Animals fumble. There's Man with the run. And sometimes fans are going to be like, why did you hand it off there? Because that, that easy, simple dive for two yards is set up all the plays in this formation outside of it. In motion number 15, that's Bebo. No team <laughs> runs yes. more yards of motion in professional football than the have, Silk City Animals. You need to have cardio and pressing through. Number 21 continuing to drive through. And that cousin on the rush has to adjust himself. But it will be another first down for the Animals who are trying to walk down this Renegades defense. And man, with another run, just a simple dive, and it's just all the back and forth motion. The Renegades are confused. They're worrying about the hurry up. They're worrying about Kenneth Stewart going in motion. Bebo just went in a jet. What are they going to call? Simple dive. They're not ready to make the tackle, and it's an easy first down again for the Animals. Hand play off, action. Play action. Huff in trouble. Huff will get it off and intended for number 35, but it will be incomplete and there will be second down. Just to show you how elite Huff is, that was a play action set up for the quick screen. And because the quick screen was completely blown up and looks like a miscommunication on that left side of the offensive you know, play there, he goes back door and almost finds a guy <laughs> hesitating on a slant, throws it sidearm, and if, if that wasn't Wally Cleaver and that was Lou Scheiste, a guy who's been in that position before, that could have been a touchdown. And you saw Trey Baskerville. He's known as Mr. Do-Everything on the back of his jersey. He's been trying to do everything to keep this Renegades defense together, but 
An underwhelming performance from the entire defensive unit so far today for East Orange. Well, one way to, to kind of cancel out a great pass rush is to call the play when they're not ready. <laughs> and that's what Huff has done all day. And there's the pitch over to Dub Zero, cutting through like Sub Zero and icing the Renegades' chance of getting back on the board or getting that ball back. It'll be third and about five for and again, the animals. And a quick. And as, as quickly as the refs can set up the play in the chains, Huff is calling it. And got that big Rob LT dangling ear, <laughs> uh, earring. Looks like they almost want to do. Look at Joker at the top of your screen coming in the crack motion. And that will be Huff. Oh, cutting up the sideline, a big block, and Quattro Huffin will jog into the end zone. He's going to try to toss it back to somebody. He still has not yet to score. This play is still live. Huff, what are you doing? And he will keep it at the – he's this waiting is at the, the three. Word. You are being so disrespectful, my There's friend. No Get in there. Whistle. He hasn't scored yet. The clock should still be running. He still hasn't scored yet. Snatch it and, from him. Oh, touchdown. touchdown wow. wow. I was was he trolling to us? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the call was, if the play was stopped or not. We're trying to hear from our, our officials. We're going to have to hear from Huff. I think what he was doing, because he knows how you call touchdown runs. Yeah. It, it is first and goal. Forward progress was stopped. Huff tosses it back. There's to McCutcheon. McCutcheon. Back to Huff playing a little pitchy, pitchy, woo-woo. And that's thrown back to McCutcheon. And oh, McCutcheon. with the hands! Touchdown, animals! What a play! There's February on our calendar. <laughs> TBS season! <laughs> and we're not talking about the home of the Braves in the 1990s. Putting six more on the board. What a play in the Renegades defense finding themselves in the midst of of getting posterized by Shaquem McCutcheon. But Huff has been that special. The animals have played up to his level, and at just as great as the animals have been playing, as we see Khalil Green on the three-on-one, the Renegades have been as disappointing. But here's a young man who could turn that around here on the three-on-one. Gets past Huff and gets tangled and brought down at the 45. But we can't wait to bring you the action this, this coming July in Bullhead. I'm Matt Ryan, joined alongside Corey Him. The start of our fourth and final frame in the opening game of the opening round of the A7FL playoffs. Corey Price has only been able to get his team on the board twice. Once to, to Quile Garrett, and then the other one to Khalil Green on first down. Chase down, tossed to the sideline, and that will be a loss of about five. That'll get him to the 40. It'll be second and 15. And if you look at the Renegades, they're all questioning what was going on on that play. They, they, fake, they fake the quick screen, and then they sent a delay with the, with the tight end. Dondre Haynes in the middle of the field seemed to be wide open. They sent wide receivers down the field seeming to be wide open, and then they throw it back to the quick screen out of bounds for a loss of five on a play. Basically the way that most of this game has gone for this side of the ball for the East Orange Renegades. And there have been moments where this team has been brilliant, but I think the lack of playing together, that chemi that lack of chemistry and fighting within the pressure of, it, of playing in this game has been a real tough mountain to climb. And, and we're seeing how those first seven weeks matter so much to building your team identity because this Renegades team since week two have been at a crossroads. And, and there's been a lot of different ways and paths that teams have gotten from week one to round, round one of the playoffs. And you look at a team like the Animals, they were building week after week except for that little lull in the middle of the season. It seems like they're geared up. The Renegades are up and down here and there, don't know who they are, don't know what they 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 can rely upon, and with CP3 coming back, we thought it was what we needed, and, and it's an been a lot of that. Again. When you jump and throw, it's not going to be on target, and CP3 has had struggle in the passing game pretty much all day, except for those great throws to Khalil Green and Qua for those touchdowns. And that was intended for D'Angelo Brown, vet of this league, who's been around for a minute now, and the, uh, is that was, pardon me, that was Jabril Beeman, a.k.a. Breeze, wearing number 11 today instead of number 8, which is what he usually wears. Yeah, and Bree Breezy's interesting uh, because normally in this league, he's, he's, he's won a championship at the cornerback position. He came into this year wanting to prove that he's a great wide receiver, and he just hasn't had really the attempts towards him. Price 
Throws this one deep down. Field out of reach of the receiver. And he will barrel roll. That intended for Beeman. There's the attempt, right? And it'll be fourth and 15. And you can see the frustration on the veteran's face. He gets dapped up by Ron Clark, another veteran who came out of retirement to play this season with a Renegades team that look to make a run and are getting stopped at the door. And CP3 is getting ripped in our comments section. And based on his performance, you know, rightfully so, he's going to take responsibility for the way that he looks right now. But we do have to remember, he's coming off of, of weeks and weeks where he was trying to recover. He's not on the field getting the reps. He's not in the field, you know, getting his legs ready. And when you return from a, a, an injury, it does take a Warriors mentality, but it, it takes a lot more than just your pure athleticism to get back in sync with the team. And you just see here, he hasn't been able to find sync with the Renegades in this first round of, of the A7FL playoffs against a, a tough Silk City Animals team. And it's been endemic of a lot of the teams in this league trying to build up from the start, trying to build these teams up and met emphatically by the Animals defense. Player down on the field, but he'll get right back up. And that was another big stop by Missile Dessaline. And that's Michael Dessaline again on the tackle, a Newark native, playing in town beef since 2013, a former warrior. And he's stepping off the sideline, and it will be fourth down, and you see Price walking back to the sideline. Yeah, and they, they, they aren't able to convert the fourth down. And another situation where CP3 walks off the field without putting points on the board. And we talked about it in the pregame before we were on air, Matt, that Huff, CP3, they had conversations earlier this year. We, I, I make the joke that Huff was 2-0 and earlier this season. Unless we see a miracle, like I said, because you got to play till the end of the game. Looks and like Huff. It looks like the Desh Williams will step in at quarterback. Oh, pardon me, Huff, uh, pardon me, Huff with the ball on first down. And he, he goes quick screen to Lou Scheisty and misses. It'll be 10.40 left in the fourth. We'll see if, as, as usual, the animals go with the hurry up. And it will be second and 10. We could talk about the animals' offense, and they've been high octane all season. They've been able to put up points pretty much against anybody. But shout outs to the animals' defense stepping up today. They've been allowing 40 points a game since week three. Today, so far, only 12. The snap. Huff in trouble. Throws this one. It's a horse race to the end zone. Swatted down. Look like there could have been a flag or seven, but it is incomplete, and the player down on the field looks like his hamstring got jammed up. And Lou Scheiste making an effort on the, the play there. Uh, definitely an injury or, or frustration or something, but credit... Jabril Beeman on the coverage. You see his his roots there, his cornerback roots. Great coverage. Huff put it in a spot where maybe his player could make a play, but it'll bring up third down. And see Lucia, I see Lou Nieves frustrated on that walk back to the end zone. He is going to be mad about that. <laughs> is he, like, next is he like Nick Saban's cousin or nephew or something? It's 47 <laughs> to 12. You missed one play. He also might have got, he's mad that he's hurt. He looked like he jumped off the field pretty quick. Hopefully he's not. Yeah, it might have been just a tightness in the hamstring. Bebo setting up at the top of your screen. Ayo Merero on third and ten and a flag on the play, and it will be false start on the offense. A lot of pointing in, in the 2023 A7FL season. We saw early on in the season a guy we'll see in a 4 o'clock game coming up. Rashad Knight with the point against the Snow Tribe, which is the matchup. We saw today Huff did a point after making, uh, I think it was uh, one of our guys at the D-end. I'm not going to call him out, Miss. <laughs> but third and 15 after the penalty. The snap, and there's the handoff to Marrero, and Marrero will be met by Baskerville and Haynes, and it will be stopped, and it will be fourth and almost 20. It will be fourth and 19 for the Animals who look to go for it. Well, they're going to they're gonna be aggressive here. They're going to let the clock run down a little bit. But if they do go for it, uh, you know, it's, no necessar it's not necessarily a position in, in the game where you're worried about giving momentum back. And they go, hurry up. On Here's the, Huff. Huff throws. And dude, incomplete. Almost intercepted. Couldn't hold on to the ball. And a great heads-up play there by Dub Zero. And you can see the frustration on number 12's face. That's Desh Williams. 
Well, and if he got the interception there, the only person that that benefits is him for the yeah. stats because knocking it down, they get better field positions. So he's over there throwing a temper tantrum because he didn't give the Renegades negative 30 yards. Here's the replay. And you see, you know, not huge pressure there, but Huff's able to find a guy he thinks is going to be open and incomplete on fourth down. No big deal. They get the ball back 30 yards ahead. Dash, what's, what's the issue? <laughs> Matt Ryan joined by Corey Hammond, 827 left to go. CP3 getting the gift of a turnover on downs. And with the score what it is, Price will need to utilize everything at his disposal in the next 815. Well, you can see the body language of the Renegades. They got to score 35, eight minutes. A lot of time in football. We could Three we'll, minutes, two-minute warning. I mean, it's tough. I don't really think it's possible, but... Anything is possible if you ask Kevin Garnett, really, That's right? True. Um, but the thing is, is that if you're going to do it, you better start now. Watch the matchup here between Sayer Hancock and Mike Liberti. Flag on the play. Thrown and incomplete. Could have been a free play or stepping back. Yeah, Khalil Green thought he had an opening there on the deep slant, the deep cross over the middle. That's the pass, pass pattern he scored a touchdown on earlier. But the ball a little bit too high over the middle and incomplete. Looks like it will be considered a free play. So even though it's incomplete, I think it's only going to be a five-yard penalty on the defense. So it'll be first and five again. The clock continues to tick. I think at this point the Renegades are looking to just make sure that they can take advantage of the rest of this game on offense, make sure that they get the right plays in. But basically, this point in the season, you should know what play on first and five, seven minutes left in the fourth quarter you're calling. It's just with the, the newness of having CP3 back and getting back into a rhythm with this team, which, you know, he, this is his first year with the team anyway. It's not like he has a ton of equity with all of these guys. But first and five, you know, getting back on page, he's got to tell every single one of his eligible receivers what route they're running. And I'm going to be honest with you, Matt. When you do that, you forget the first guy you told. <laughs> the snap on first down after the penalty. Price throws it. Haynes will get the ball. He'll cut through a defender. He makes one miss. DeAndre Haynes on his bicycle. The big man plowing ahead to the 25. They may call him down at the 24. And the Renegades finding new life here in the fourth frame. It was the first thing that we talked about is that DeAndre Haynes has to be able to make plays in this game for it to be a Renegades win especially but even for the Renegades to compete. And you see on a play like that where this is ridiculous. This is a, you know, and this is a desperation pass from CP3 at the line of scrimmage with two guys near him. And Dondre Haynes takes it from catching it at the 46. And basically what feels like six steps, he's already at the 25. And when they make contact with him, they was at the 32, and he somehow manages to fall forward seven yards. So imagine if the Renegades were able to get the ball to that man earlier in the game and more often. That's the type of play calling and design that the, I think the Renegades are lacking and one of the reasons why the Animals are up and the Renegades are still struggling. The screen thrown to the end zone. Caught off the hands oh, of Beeman. They go with the statue formation. The backup quarterback, Chris, is back there to catch it. Puts the ball right into Breezy's hands. And Huff is saying that, he strapped him up, but that's I wanna a drop. Know, I want to know how many scores not how many scores he's denied. He's helped put 47 points on the board, Corey. How many has he denied for the Renegades today? That plus wide, minus margin is crazy. And, and he's talking about it. He was just saying, too, he's counting. He's putting his fingers up. Huff is saying a lot of things. And the fact is, is that anything that he's saying is probably 100% fact. Because at this point, you see here, they go double pass. That's Chris. He's changed his jersey from the preacher jersey because it didn't work out for him against the Renegades. But that's a well-thrown ball, and it's put in a, in a position where Breezy, if he comes down with that, that's a highlight that they can go home with feeling happy about. CP3 throws, coughed to hands, and knocked away Sayer Hancock, rookie of the year, strapping up the vet Liberty. And he's definitely a candidate for sure. And on the defensive side of the ball, I don't, I don't know if there's a cornerback that stands <laughs> out as much as Sayer Hancock does because people have been taking shots and been trying to throw it to him. I got intercepted from him two weeks ago, throwing a ball to Goose. But you see there the ball is thrown to Liberty on the crossing route and because it's just a little bit behind him, 
Hancock's able to break on the ball, break it up, and another great defensive play from a, a Animals corner. And like I said earlier, the Animals defense, along with their offense that has obviously put up the 47, but their defense showed up ready to play playoff football today. And if they're holding the CP3-led Renegades to 12, that's eight less than the BIC defense held them to week one. So great. Zaire Hancock might be player of the game because he helped set the tone with that interception. Well, and, and when that interception was made, Dondre Haynes, when the ball was thrown, was wide open. Yeah. He broke on that, got it in his hands, and then turned it into six. And then from that moment, this game has pretty much been over. The snap. Price will take the ball down Broadway. Price will ride towards the end zone. Touchdown, Anna, uh, Renegades. And that's what he can do. And that's what he consistently does. But he's attempted the ball probably over 25 times today, and he's completed about five or six of them. So great run from CP3. That's exactly what you expect from the veteran. That's exactly what he does best in his game. And it's 47-18, and that's pretty much with 312. That's all we can say about that play. And we'll talk about this on the three-on-one podcast this week, but we see the replay of the touchdown Great vision there from Price to know exactly where to go, find that edge, and run right into the end zone. But when the story of this game is talked about on the boards, by us on the 3-on-1 podcast, what's going to be the one sticking point that everyone turns back to? Well, on the boards, it's going to be something uh, unintelligible. But on the 3-on-1 podcast, no, I'm just joking. Really what this game, to me, has stemmed down to is, is that the animals have spent an entire Looking to move around here at the top of the hour. It's the you and the Schnow tribe. And there's the handoff to Dub Zero. Dub Zero bounces around a defender, cuts inside, and met emphatically inside the 15. The ball came out. It looked like he, oh, he's clutching his ankle, and he'll hobble off. I was clutching his shin. He might have hyperextended something. He will run off, and it looks like... The Animals will keep the ball. Looked like the play was called dead before anybody carried that. But let's see here again on the replay. And you see here, there, there's guys in for the Animals, you know, getting their opportunity that they normally don't. I just saw Baby Joker, and you hope, uh, you know, if the secret agent is going to be good there. Here's Moreno. He's being checked out, I believe, on the sideline. But that was a pretty great seven-yard run to start the drive, and you see the clock is ticking down. Time winding here. We're near the two-minute warning. Marrero will get the ball. He'll run to immediately into number one. And that's a big tackle, and it will be third down. Yeah, Samad Jenkins, when you play straight-up run, run game football, he's going to be that inside-the-box linebacker that, that just stops that type of run. And he does there. There's no gain on the play. It'll bring up third down. But again, the clock is just ticking away. We're basically just, it's just a formality at this case. We're waiting for it to be double zeros on the clock. But Liberty's calling timeouts. Liberty wants another chance at offense in this A7FL season. And how much, how many changes do you think we'll see from the, the Renegades in this offseason? Because a lot of teams out there would be interested in guys like Trey Baskerville, Liberty, Khalil Green. They're, they're missing pieces for certain teams, especially teams like the Animals, who might be a player or two away from being in that conversation. And Quattro Huffin, does he continue to play after this season? He'll play another week in the handoff to Marrero, and Marrero met by Samad Jenkins at the 22, and it will be the two-minute warning, and it looks like they got the first down, but under two minutes to play in this game, and, folks, the Silk City Animals and the East Orange Renegades, an entertaining game, but not the game we expected. We expected more of a defensive battle. To give you guys a note, the first time these two teams played in week two was 7 to nothing. But that was also 30-mile-per-hour wins. Yeah, Mother Nature won that game, that's for sure. And it will be third down, pardon me, third and one. Huff, after the two-minute warning. He'll keep the ball. He will get to the 26. And it looks like they will give him the first down. And the clock will continue to run. Well, you were asking about the offseason for both of these teams. And they're, they're going to be interesting because there were whispers that the, the, the core of the Renegades were going other places yeah. middle, of the, uh, middle of this offseason. 
they were able to kind of rally. They picked up a lot of former Hawks players as the Hawks kind of folded and, and didn't exist anymore. So the Renegades are in a dangerous position because, yeah, there's a lot of guys on their, their roster that look good, and they didn't look good in this playoffs as Huff rolls out and throws it out of bounds. We'll see what the penalty is here. Because a guy like Trey Baskerville, a guy like Dondre, a guy like Liberty, they're competitive football players that have a lot of interest around the league, and if, if they want to stay and build with the Renegades, they're going to have to trust in the process that they're building because, I'll be honest, since the 2021 season for me, now, I'm a little biased, but the Renegades look have looked as if they've moved backwards, at least on offense, you know, since since the last time that they won a playoff game. And it would be interesting to see how they, they move forward, especially at the quarterback position, because CP3 is a great quarterback in this league. But with his injury concerns, is he somebody that you, you pencil in as your QB1 and, and hope that he's going to go the whole season? And there's the handoff. The 21 spins out, spins through again. There's man, they got to tackle man him. Man gets to the 28, and it will be second down after the penalty. Timeout called by the Renegades one more time. And they're calling timeouts, so the animals better be careful because health is going to be a situation. Yeah. We just saw two, you know, pretty pretty quality players for the animals hobble off to the sideline, and and it's and you see them there. They're they're running the ball. They're running the clock out. But health is, is, at this point, the game is, is points-wise, is over. They have to finish the game. Everybody's got to play to their level. But the one thing that can stop the animals moving the next week is a key guy going down for no reason. And potentially playing the watcher, and you see CP3 on defense. He is spying Quattrell Huff, and you see Sayer Hancock, who's had himself a day. Will set up split in motion. Huff throws, intercepted. Intercepted. Yes, Samad Jenkins. Samad Jenkins running down the side. Looking for pay dirt. Samad Jenkins in the end zone with 60 seconds left. Put it 58, putting another six on the board. And the Renegades not going gently into that good night. That's why they're calling timeouts. They're trying to put more on the board, but yeah, 24 to 47 looks pretty good. Yeah, it's certainly better than 47-18. Uh, hey, I played for the Omegas. Shout out to the Boston <laughs> Omegas all season. And one thing that the Omegas did is we played until they kicked us off the field. And, you know, there was a lot of games that they kicked us off the field prematurely. It looked like he might have stepped out of bounds there, but I'm not trying to narc on my guy. Don't you dare call that back on him. <laughs> oh, no, they did it. Oh, no. Did they? No, I don't think so. Good. Whew. I would have heard that in my ear, I think. I didn't. Well, that's they know not to talk to me because I'll just <laughs> power through them and just keep blabbering on. But CP3 here looking to make the extra point. Look, let's see how serious they take this. It is not the, challenged. The last couple times we've seen some uh, throwbacks, some double reverses. What we haven't seen yet is a behind-the-back pass that actually counted in play. We saw Huff attempt one. But it does look like they, oh, they took away the touchdown from my guy. Oh, man, I feel, I feel guilty. I knocked him out. I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm unsure if they did. I'm waiting for any confirmation on whether it was a score or not. Well, since they're starting the ball on the seven. And oh, no, they're starting on the seven-yard line. I'm so pretty sure there's no, there's no one-and-a-half point conversion. And, and they Khalil fake the Green, reverse. Kareen in there for the touchdown. Khalil Green careens into the end zone. He's excited. Now it's 24-47. to 47. And if you look at our scoreboard, Khalil Green just magically put 15 back up as far as time goes. Now that's obviously incorrect, and yes. that's Khalil Green working his voodoo magic on us. <laughs> Shout out to Voodoo Reek, who we will not see on the A7FL games of the week. But if you're a fan of Vegas football, the force take on Sick With It. And that will be at 10 p.m. And Eastern. Mike Liberty thinks, I'm pretty sure that Mike Liberty was expecting the ball there. And Khalil Green just <laughs> went rogue. He says, nope, that's a touchdown for me. And his second on the day. And they'll go for two from the 10. You see Price set up with the. Liberty in motion to toss back. Liberty to CP. Thrown. Wobbler. But caught Trey Baskerville putting two on the board. And with 51 seconds left to go and one timeout, it's 47-26. It's a three-score game. A lot can happen in 46 seconds. We've seen it before. But I don't know if they'll be able to put three scores on the board. There's, there's situations in which teams have put up, 
you know, 21 points in 46 seconds. And those situations are when BIC has a Shanti Worthy and he does it. So I'm not sure if the Renegades have that in their repertoire. But if I've just pronounced that word correctly, which I think I did, the Renegades have a chance. But well, let's see what happens. And we'll see 47 to 26, your score. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. At the top of the hour, it will be the U and the Snow Tribe. We'll see what time. That game throws off, but uh, a final here in Cincinnati, 63-7. to The chaos moving on, as we stated earlier, to the Ohio Championship game. And we are waiting on the challenge and uh, waiting on the three-on-one throw-off. And shout-out to everyone watching us across social media. Follow us on Twitter at the a 7 fl or search A7FL on your favorite social media platform and here comes a three on one attempt and that one out of the hands of Bebo. Bebo will get it now at the five. Bebo cuts to the 20 and brought down by Haynes at the 23. And he ends up with the ball in his hands. I don't know how he did it but he's that kind of special player. <laughs> we just expected a little bit more from him. I don't think it was him playing poorly today Matt. I think he just didn't have the opportunities but the animals with the ball back 51 seconds and the Renegades, Matt, they still have one timeout. <laughs> Crazier things have happened in life. And whether you are on Long Island or Long Beach or anywhere in between, we're glad you're joining us on A7FL. Speaking of crazy things. Watch the big man there. And he's it'll looking, be looking to be in victory formation. And they jumped the line. He's got to call... Ready, set, go. He's just kneeling it. And he drops there it. There we go. And, uh, you know, those I meant California Long Beach. And, uh, you know, he's not a very experienced uh, player in the position that he's put in right there, as the Renegades call their final timeout of the afternoon. The due diligence there to make sure that they. Uh... And there's the and quarterback stick. Big man bringing it. Downfield to get the first down. The ball came loose, but they'll whistle him dead. And he gets yardage there. And and for those fans of the NFL, people might know about the 600-pound squat. Saying, I, I, that should have been a touchdown. No, the whistle blew it dead. Well, he definitely hit the ground. Yeah. I, I felt it in the booth. <laughs> Um, but we, we've we've talked about maybe you know Jalen Hurts, the quarterback for the Eagles, is a 600-pound squat quarterback. I've never seen a 600-pound near actual quarterback <laughs> taking the sneak right <laughs> off the right side. And if it wasn't for Trey Baskerville using the momentum and physics, that man might have went a long way. Not a touchdown, but for him, the 20-yard run is gonna is definitely gonna constitute as a sprint. I want flan for the weirdest reason. I, I can't I can't put my finger <laughs> you on. You want it. flan? Well, that I man want flan just for ate. Some reason. That man last night just ate three full platters of flan to get and, that. And that is how we end this one. That is the, the March. That is the March calendar picture right there. <laughs> and the Silk City Animals will move on to the second round of the A7FL playoffs. Something that before this season. We would not have said out loud we were walking into this game thinking the Animals could pull off the victory, but the Renegades not able to keep this game close in the first half, but the Animals only scoring once in the second half. Well, what's interesting is, is <laughs> Matt, we joked about it in the opposite way, but look at, look at the final score, 21, right? Yeah. We're going to take a break. Animals spotted the Renegades 21. And if you want to get caught up on what you missed in this game, don't worry, folks, on A7FL.TV and DAZN, we will be running highlights of what you missed in between this game. So we're going to take a 10-minute timeout, and in 10 minutes we'll bring you the countdown to throw off. And just about 4.15 or so, we will be throwing off here. So do not go anywhere. Do not get off of what app you're using. Go get a sandwich. Go get a beverage. If you're a fan of botany, go water your plants. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back in a few minutes. It's the A7FL playoffs. You and Snow Tribe after this. This has been a broadcast of the American Sevens Football League. Like, follow, and share on our Facebook page at A7FL TV.